Good morning, and thank you for joining. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Uh, it is always a privilege to share, and I thank you for taking time uh, to be with us this morning. I always like to mention that it, it's a real blessing to hear from those who are watching and listening, and uh, if you have a prayer concern you'd like uh, for someone to pray for faithfully and confidentially, uh, we would certainly uh, invite you to be in contact concerning that. Uh, or just uh, sharing a praise, a testimony, uh, just uh, letting us know that you're watching and listening, just hearing from you is a, a real encouragement. So there's a phone number listed on your screen. You can call or text, or if you prefer to email, we have the address listed for that as well. So you know, whatever the case, we would love to be able to hear from you. You know, a question that has been asked by many people throughout the ages, a timeless question, is the question, what does God want? Uh, you know, beginning with the acknowledgement that there is a God, which certainly is an important starting point, uh, but what does God expect of those who believe in him and want to approach him? And with that, I would have you notice what is said in Micah chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Uh, the question is raised with what shall I come to the Lord and bow myself before the God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does the Lord take delight in thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my rebellious acts, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? We, you sense there is uh, some exaggeration in what is listed here, there's even, we might say, a bit of sarcasm as well. Because the list begins with what might seem reasonable, and it expands to that which is outrageous. Uh, a burnt offering uh, was prescribed with God's law. That seemed very reasonable. But then going to the thought of thousands of rams and vast rivers of oil, that seems to border on the extreme. And then the most outrageous of all is the sacrifice of one's child. This was the very thing that was done in godless pagan religions. And so is this even something as outrageous? Is this, is this what God requires of us? Well, the answer of what God requires is summed up in probably the most memorable of all verses in the Bible, Micah 6, verse 8, a very familiar verse to many. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. So you'll notice that the answer is in the form of a question, which sounds a lot like a popular game show these days. But God, through Micah, is reminding us, reminding them of what he's already said, because God is not revealing, speaking anything new, but God's reply here, which again is in the form of a, a question, is an appeal to reason with him. Does this not make sense that this is what your God requires of you? And so with that reasoning, the question is, is it not good that we should do justice? Is this not what God requires of, the, of us? And we do well to try to understand what is meant by justice. Does it mean that we become active in our country's judicial system? Uh, that we champion the rights of the downtrodden and the oppressed is, is that form of social action what he requires, and we cannot say that it is not what he requires. And uh, if there are some clear opportunities to do so, then perhaps we should become involved in those ways. But we do well to consider what is the ultimate justice in the eyes of God. And I think it's summarized very well in Romans 5 verse 1 which says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Herein seems to be a very important answer. The greatest justice that we can do for anyone is to share the gospel with them. To share the gospel with the unsaved is the ultimate act 
of justice so that they might have the opportunity to be justified before God through the sacrifice and work of Christ. So it would seem that a passion to please our God is expressed in sharing his salvation offer with others. To love God, as we see here, is to love mercy. Hosea 6 verse 6 says, and this is God speaking through the prophet, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. You know, the greatest good that we can do for others is to be merciful to them rather than exacting and vengeful, to show grace to them, even as God through Christ has shown grace to us. That is the fruit of of the valuing grace that's been shown is that we are gracious, graceful to others. To love God, according to Micah 6.8, is to walk humbly with him. Love is expressed not so much in what we do for God, but in time spent with him. You know, it would be a commendable thing for a husband to send flowers or a gift to his wife every day, but ultimately, what is done for her isn't nearly as important as meaningful time spent together. That's the real heart of a relationship. It's uh, nice when things are done, but being together in a relationship is the thing that matters. So what our Father desires and requires of us is not so much our deeds as our heart. You know, we remember King David as a man after God's own heart, and this was pleasing. I'm also thinking back in the book of Genesis. At the very beginning, it speaks about how God walked in the garden in the cool of the day with Adam. What did God want with his creation, with his creature? He wanted relationship with them. So we can say that there is no real formula for pleasing our Father, just some very simple guidelines that follow from a true heart of love for him. So he wants a personal relationship with us, and that in itself, I would think, is truly humbling as we think about it. You know, Jesus was asked concerning the greatest commandment. I'm sure we're familiar with this. Matthew 22, 36 to 38 uh, he was asked, Teacher, which is the greatest, the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment, the Shema, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4. The heart of the matter is the heart. Uh, deeds that are done are wrongly motivated if they're designed to earn our Father's favor. But deeds that are an expression of a deep love for him, that is what our God desires of us. And as we fix that thought in our minds, then may our day to day and every day be filled with such expressions, practical deeds, uh, things done out of gratitude and love for our Father. That's what he truly desires. Well, our time is up this morning, and I invite you to join me in prayer as we close out our time. Father God, we come before you today with a sense of clarity in what it is that you desire of us. It is not complicated. We think of the, the many, many laws contained in the Old Testament. But to cut through the real intent, the real uh, desire of it all, Father, is, is that you would have our heart. You want us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our being. And Father, because of that love, then it's expressed in things done for others. And so we see this is profoundly simple and yet ever so important. Father, find our hearts to beat with your heart. Find us to be a people who passionately are in love with you. And because of that love, it is our desire to be pleasing in the way we live and act out of gratitude, not to earn your favor, which can never be done, but expressions of our love for you, expressions shown to others. Again, Father, we see this to be so very simple, but so very important. So guide our steps, guide our actions, guide our intentions. 
Father, that we may please you in every way, that you might find hearts aligned with yours out of immense gratitude and love for you and all that you have done for us. May we be expressive in our love in all the ways that would be pleasing to you. Guide our day today. May this love set the sail and set the course of our day that we please you. Father, we thank you for these moments. In the great name of Jesus and our love for him that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing these moments. Uh, I trust that God's word has been effective in your life as we've shared it today and that uh, it, it penetrates uh, deep into your heart and guides you as it guides each one of us. May we please him in every way. Thanks for sharing this time. I look forward to sharing in the future. May God watch over us until we meet together again in this way. So long and God bless. Music.